All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take the Boyle's Law, the pressure and volume relationship, and Charles' Law, the volume and temperature relationship, and we're going to put them together. And when you put them together, you get what's called the combined gas law. Okay, now you'll notice here that there's actually a third law that we didn't discuss yet, but it's, it's part of the combined gas law as well. And you notice that, remember, let's talk a little bit about the ways you can use the, the combined gas law. Remember that if the temperature remains constant in an equation, what can you do with that temperature? Well, you don't use it because it remains constant. So notice what happens. If the temperature remains constant, what happens to our equation? Oh, it becomes Boyle's Law. What happens in our equation if the pressure remains constant? Well, then we take the pressure out and look what it becomes. It becomes Charles Law. And a third one that's called the Gay-Lussac the, the Gay Law, excuse me, is one where the volume remains constant. And if the volume remains constant, then notice what happens. Basically, you have something very similar to Charles' law, but now you've got when the temperature goes up inside of a container, the pressure also goes up. And that kind of goes back to, remember when, when one of my previous videos we talked about aerosol cans. In an aerosol can, that volume can't change. But if you throw an aerosol can in a fire, the pressure inside of that is going to go up and up and up to a point where it's very likely that the aerosol can will explode. Okay, so as you raise the temperature of a gas, if the volume remains constant, then the pressure will also increase. Many times in house fires, you, you as the house is burning, a lot of times you'll hear a large explosion because that will be like the propane tank in the backyard that got so hot that the pressure got so big inside of it that it will explode. So that's another reason, obviously house fires aren't good anyway, but that's another reason why they can be dangerous because you could have an explosion that happens uh, in the middle of it. So the combined gas law is really, really helpful because you can use it as, like I said, Boyle's law. There's Boyle's law right there. You can use it as Charles' law when the pressure is constant. And you can use it as the Gay-Lussac law when the volume is constant and you have P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Okay, now sometimes something doesn't remain constant, so you can't remove it. And in that case, what do you use? You use the whole thing. Okay, let me show you a few examples of that. So example number one, a fixed quantity of gas at 23 degrees Celsius exhibits a pressure of 700, 748 torr and occupies a, 10 point, occupies a volume of 10.3 liters. So we've got the temperature, we've got the pressure, and we've got a volume. So we've got P1, V1, and T1. It says calculate the volume the gas will occupy at 23 degrees Celsius. Notice that our temperature hasn't changed. So if the temperature hasn't changed, what do you do? You come back up to the, to the combined gas law and you take out temperature. So what type of problem do we have now? It's a Boyle's Law type problem. P1, V1 equals P2, V2. Okay, so the pressure. So here's our final pressure. So we've got P1, V1 equals P2, V2. So our initial pressure is 748 torr. Our initial volume was 10.3 liters. Our final pressure is 1.88 atmospheres. Ooh, so notice right there, we've got a problem, don't we? And you gotta catch that, okay? The units for pressure must be the same. We can't have atmospheres and torr. So I'm gonna go ahead <coughs> and take those 1.88 atmospheres and I'm gonna multiply by 760 to make them torr. So that equals 1,429 torr. And now our final volume is what they're asking us for. So to solve for V2, we're gonna divide by 1429. So that's 748. Divide both sides by 1429. And then you'll see our torr canceling, everything canceling here. So 748 
times 10.3 divided by 1429 equals 5.39. Nine, and then what units do we have? We have liters. Okay, part B says calculate the volume the gas will occupy if the temperatures increase to 165 while the pressure is held constant. So if the pressure is held constant, then we take the pressure out. Remember, anytime something is constant, you can remove it from the equation. So now we have V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So our initial volume again was 10.3 liters. Our initial temperature was 23 degrees Celsius. We got to immediately put that into Kelvin. That's 296 Kelvin. Uh, the final volume is what they're asking us for. Calculate the volume. And our temperature is increased to 165. 273 plus 165, I believe, is 438 Kelvin. Okay, so remember, now we cross multiply and then we divide. So cross multiply, move that 438 up there, move the 296 over there. And then remember, we've got to get V2 by itself. So we're going to end up dividing by the 296. So 10.3 multiplied by 438 divided by 296 equals... Our final volume is 15.2 liters. Okay. Now part C. Calculate the pressure of the gas. And this one's done for you. Calculate the pressure of the gas if the temperature increases to 65 and the volume decreases to 9.2. So notice that the temperature and the volume both change. Nothing remains constant. So now we do have to use the full combined gas law. So again, our initial pressure was 748 torr. That's back at the beginning of the problem. The initial volume was 10.3 and the initial temperature is 296. Again, we got all of that from right here. There's our T1. Convert that to Kelvin 296. There's our pressure. There's our volume. So that's our P1, V1, and T1. Okay, now for our final pressure, volume, and temperature, the temperature is going to increase to 65. So it's 65 plus 273 is 338. There's our T2. And the volume decreases to 9.2. So there's our volume. And they're asking us to calculate the pressure. Okay, and so there's our unknown, our P2. So similar to Charles' law, we cross multiply. So what does that mean? It means we take this 296 and we're going to move it up over here. We're going to take the 338. We're going to multiply it up over here. So notice here's our 338 on the left hand side now. And here's our 296. And then mathematically to solve for P2, we're going to take 748 times 10.3 times 338 divide by 9.2 divide by 296. Real easy just to trust my answer here, guys. I strongly recommend you put that in your calculator. See if you get the same answer as me. Okay, make sure that when you go, you go 748 times 10.3 times 338 divided by 9.2 divided by 296. If you're not getting the right answer, that's why. Okay, anything on the bottom, you have to hit divide multiple times, just like we hit multiple, we hit the multiply button more than once. Okay, example two, and this will be our last one. Helium gas. So here's where you got a lot of numbers. You got to be really careful. Okay, so you've got helium gas, and sometimes when you draw these out, it can help you. Okay, so you've got a helium gas at 45 degrees Celsius. So that's T1. And again, immediately, I'm going to put that into Kelvin. Is in a 4.5 liter container. So that's my volume. And I know that's volume because liters is a volume. 
So volume equals 4.50 liters. And at 852, it doesn't say what it is, but that's millimeters of mercury. I know that's pressure. So I've got my initial pressure, volume, and temperature. And then it's moved to a 2,500 milliliter container. Right away, we got a problem. This volume is in liters. This volume is in milliliters. Okay, and the easiest way, <clears throat> and you're going to be doing this a bunch, to convert milliliters to liters is to just move that decimal point three spaces to the left. So instead of 2,500, we're going to go boop, boop, boop. We're going to move that three spaces to the left, and that makes it 2.5 liters. So forget about the 2,500 milliliters. It's 2.5 liters. Okay, and that's our new volume. So that's our V2. And a temperature of 60. So 273 plus 60 equals 333 Kelvin. And that's our final temperature. And they're asking for the pressure. Notice <clears throat> they're asking for the pressure in atmospheres. So when we're all done, if our pressure is not in atmospheres, we're going to convert it to atmospheres. So since there's nothing that remains constant, we have to use the full or combined gas law. I was starting to look at this one down here. No, it's not the ideal gas. We'll get to that in the next video. So P1, 852 millimeters of mercury times V1, 4.50 liters over T1, 318 Kelvin is equal to the final pressure. Okay, the final pressure is what they're asking us for, right? What is the pressure, right? So P2 times V2, that's our V2 over here, 2.50 liters, and over the final temperature, which is 333 Kelvin. Okay, just like always, what do we do? We cross multiply. Move that 333 up here, move the 318 over here, and then we're going to divide. Okay, so I end up with P2 equaling, see if you agree with me here, 852 millimeters of mercury times 4.50 liters times 333 Kelvin, oh, forgot a three there, 333 Kelvin over 318 Kelvin and 2.50 liters. Okay, and if I have this set up correctly, all of my units have to cancel except for the units for pressure. So notice I've got liters and liters canceling. I've got Kelvin and Kelvin canceling. Notice my only units left are the units for pressure. So I'm going to take 852, multiply by 4.50, um, and then multiply by 333 and then divide by 318 and divide by 2.5. And I get a final pressure of 1606 millimeters of mercury. And remember they wanted the pressure in atmospheres, so I'm gonna say there's 760 millimeters of mercury in one atmosphere. So I'm just gonna divide by 760 and I get my final answer of after all of that, 2.11 ATM. Okay, so the combined gas law can be really, really helpful because, again, you can use it as Boyle's law, just pressure and volume. You can use it as Charles' law when the pressure is constant, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And then you can also use it as the Gay-Lussac law where the, the volume is constant, so you've got P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And then, of course, just like our last couple of examples, you can use it as the entire combined gas law when you don't have anything that's constant in the equation.